in a galaxy far, far away on a small distant planet named Shiton with a population of 250,000 people. A special child was born to a brilliant scientist, John. The couple is overjoyed with their child, but a spaceship belonging to the ruthless ruler of the planet already approaches them. In panic, the wife suggests hiding the child, but the scientist is certain that he will be found anyway. The only way to save the baby from the tyrant is to send him to another planet in another galaxy. While the flying ship docks with their tower, John quickly identifies a suitable planet. After finding the most advanced region on that planet, which is the USA, he enters the coordinates into the autopilot. The couple sends the space pod to Earth. At that moment, an army led by the evil dictator sitting in a flying egg-shaped chair storms the laboratory. The tyrant interrogates the scientist about the child's whereabouts as the baby is the property of his empire, a result of an experiment a perfect weapon. The scientist refuses to reveal the destination of the rescue pod to the tyrant. Then, the villain's daughter, Agatha, offers her assistance. Despite the father's disapproval due to her softness, which he despises, Agatha, using her superpowers, reads the scientist's mind and claims that the baby has been sent to planet Earth. The tyrant tells his daughter that if she wants to earn his respect, she must find the baby, and he will then take her back to Chiton. Agatha jumps into another space pod, ensuring she will quickly accomplish her mission. She almost catches up with the baby in Earth's orbit, but his pod collides with a satellite, altering its course. Agatha lands in the USA, while the baby's pod flies to Spain. Meanwhile, in Spain, a simple mechanic and owner of an auto repair shop is driving home with his wife. The baby's space pod flies past them, almost hitting their car. They cautiously approach the crash site and discover the baby with mustache. The woman says she prayed for God to send them a child, so she insists on taking the baby in. The baby accidentally breaks the man's finger. They bring the baby and his flying device home. The man tries to shave the baby's mustache, but they grow back in two seconds. The couple names him Juan. The pediatrician says that besides the mustache, the baby is perfectly normal. However, Juan constantly displays his superpowers, scaring away customers from his foster father's workshop. At school, he uses his super sight to cheat on tests and occasionally burns his classmates' papers with laser eyes. Other kids find Juan weird and constantly bully him, one day, Juanito plays soccer as a goalkeeper. Not knowing whom to pass the ball to, he decides to score a goal himself. Speeding past all players like Flash, he kicks the ball into the goal along with the goalkeeper. However, his teammates do not appreciate Juan's behavior. His father tells him that he cannot showcase his abilities to people. On his birthday, Juanito waits for invited friends who never show up for the celebration. He realizes that nobody wants to be friends with him because of his abilities. His parents explain that this is Spain, and he needs to be like everyone else. In any other country, they would consider him a cool guy, but here, everyone perceives him as a freak. The parents congratulate him on his 10th birthday. The mother brings Juanito a cake and asks him to make a wish. The boy wishes to be normal and blows out the candles along with the cake. Fast forward to 20 years later. Juan receives a phone call from his boss and only friend, Jaime. Jaime claims he hasn't seen Juan at work today. Juan lies, saying he just went to the restroom. Jaime says he will visit him right away. Juan instantly gets ready for work, using his super speed, and barely manages to arrive at his workplace before his boss. Juan pretends to be very busy with work, but Jaime is eager to chat. Juan notices that Jaime is using a new perfume and asks about the occasion. Jaime confesses that it's because of a girl he had an interview with today. He hired her only to try to date the girl. Juan says that he shouldn't use his position to build personal life. Jaime asks Juan to come up with a welcoming party in honor of the new employee and attend it, because if there's only two people at the party, it will look pretty suspicious. Juan replies that the company doesn't have a tradition of throwing parties for new employees and refuses to participate. Then the mustachioed leaves saying that he needs to go get some breakfast. While Juan deals with a vending machine that didn't give him a snack, he hears a call on the reception intercom. Using his super sight, he notices his university classmate named Luisa. It turns out she's the girl his friend was trying to impress. She immediately recognizes Juan and is genuinely happy to see him. She teasingly remarks that he works as a receptionist. Luisa mentions that she had to go through eight interviews with Jaime to get this job. Juan realizes that his friend somewhat misuses these interviews. Happy that the new employee is actually Luisa, he changes his mind and lies to her that the company has a tradition of throwing welcoming parties for new employees. The party is attended by Jaime, Juan, Luisa, and two janitors, invited just for appearance's sake. Jaime constantly flirts with Luisa, but she doesn't like his persistence and goes to another room. Jaime immediately starts questioning Juan about how he knows Luisa and whether he likes her. The janitors ask Jaime to finally let them go home, but the 
the boss remains unyielding and shows them the robot vacuum gadget from Chit Technologies, stating that this machine has more commitment to the company than the two of them. Using his super sight and super hearing, Juan sees and hears Luisa talking on the phone with her gal, complaining that the boss is flirting with her and she plans to leave the party. For that matter, she came to the party just because Juan, whom she likes. This inspires Juan. Luisa makes up an excuse and leaves, and Juan immediately goes after her. Not finding her on the platform, he gets upset, but then she calls him from the other side. He suggests going to a pizzeria, and she would gladly go, but her train arrives. Juan assures her that he'll make it to her train. She enters, and Juan is already waiting for her inside, asking what pizza she prefers. In the pizzeria, they discuss their university years. While they talk, it becomes clear that they liked each other back then. They are interrupted by a noisy crowd of teenagers throwing profanity at each other. Luisa wants to go somewhere else, but Juan suggests to finish eating first. Then, Luisa turns around and asks the youth to be more restrained. They just mock her, and Luisa starts sorting things out with the hooligans, hitting one of them on the butt with her bag, and says she she'll teach him a lesson if he continues to behave this way. The gang shifts their focus to Juan, but he doesn't want to deal with minors. Then the older one says he'll knock him down with one finger. Juan is skeptical, but in the end, the teenager really drops Juan to the floor because his friend was lying behind him. Later, Juan sits in the subway, recalling his father's words that in this country, you can't stand out and display your abilities. Suddenly, he notices that the timer for the next train's arrival is counting down too quickly. Using his super senses, Juan hears the train driver asking for help from the dispatchers because the brakes failed. The train passes without stopping at a breakneck speed. Juan's gaze falls on a poster of Chit Technologies, stating that it's time to act. He runs to the next station and tries to stop the train, but without success. Juan rushes to the end of the line and stretches a fire hose as a barrier. This time, he manages to stop the train and even set it in the opposite direction. He takes a cap from a passerby to cover his face and hurriedly exits the subway. Security cameras belong to the same chit technologies, so the superhero managed to hide his face from them. Meanwhile, in the US, the tyrant's daughter has become a powerful businesswoman and the founder of chit technologies. She presents her latest invention, a robotic cleaner. Her assistant informs her that they've detected a superhero. She reads the minds of her employees and learns that their cameras didn't capture the hero's face, and she intends to go on a search herself. By the way, all the employees of her company are clones. The next day, news about the superhero spreads across Spain. At work, everyone keeps talking about the mysterious savior, but Luisa thinks it's all staged and probably part of some marketing campaign. According to her, a Spanish superhero sounds cheesy. Juan tries to defend the image of the Spanish superhero. During the talking, Luisa hints to Juan that she's ready to go on a date with him today, which noticeably cheers him up. However, Jaime interrupts them with the news that the billionaire Agatha Mueller is coming to their city. Agatha tells journalists that she wants to meet the superhero. She addresses him directly from the screen, suggesting a collaboration. Luisa is now convinced that the superhero news is Agatha's publicity stunt. Agatha calls her father, who doesn't immediately recognize his daughter and frankly doesn't care about her. The blonde says she found the target. Dad mocks her, saying it took her 30 years, as any other person in her place would have reduced the planet to cinders and returned with a child in just two days. He declares that if the superhero is not with her by the time he arrives, he will burn the entire planet to the ground together with Agatha. Juan takes public transportation transportation to his date with Luisa. She calls him, saying she's been waiting for him at the restaurant for half an hour. Juanito promises to be there in three minutes. Then, in his head, a loud sound occurs because Agatha is trying to contact him using special sound waves. Only Juan hears her voice, and it causes him intense pain. Agatha tells him to come to her office where she will explain everything. To stop the pain, Juan goes to her office. Agatha tells him part of the truth, that they both are from another planet and have landed on Earth as infants. She tries to persuade him to join her to return and rule Chiton using their superpowers. However, Juan refuses to believe her and assures her that he is not the mysterious savior from the subway. Juan tries to leave, but Agatha manages to get into his head and finds out that all his thoughts are about Luisa. The business lady orders her clones to grab Juan. He fights them off and then makes short work of the reinforcements too. The mustache man leaves, but forgets his jacket, and Agatha finds Luisa's business card in the pocket. She orders her clones to obtain a sample
sample of Luisa's DNA. Meanwhile, at work, Jaime is getting ready to leave when suddenly the Chit Technologies vacuum robot starts an unplanned cleaning. It scans Luisa's lip print on a cup and somehow extracts her DNA code from it. Then, it connects to the computer to send the code to Agatha. Jaime notices this activity and tries to power off the robot, but it attacks Jaime. He asks the janitors to deal with the machine, and they happily eliminate their electric competitor. Jaime goes to Luisa with the broken robot to warn her that this thing sent her DNA somewhere. Since she doesn't answer the phone, he leaves her a voicemail. At the same time, Juan arrives at Luisa's door. She appears behind him with an almost empty bottle of wine. She's upset with the mustachioed for not coming and asks Juan to tell her straight if he doesn't like her. Juan confesses his interest in her and assures that there were serious circumstances preventing their meeting. Having heard this, Luisa, under the influence of alcohol, intends to take him to her home, but Juan can't allow himself to take advantage of her being drunk to spend the night with her, as it would be a low trick. The girl calls him a coward to provoke a kiss. Jaime becomes an unwitting witness to this. Feeling betrayed by his best friend, Jaime intends to leave when a Chit Technologies van appears behind him. Agatha reads his thoughts and understands that he also likes Luisa. She promises him a new Luisa if he helps her. A cyborg clone of Luisa is already sitting in the van. Juanito comes to his parents to find out his true origin. The couple tries their best to hide the truth, insisting that they are his real parents. But eventually, Juan reveals what they were hiding. They take him to the spaceship on which he arrived on Earth. Touching it, Juan activates a holographic message from his biological father. The man says that if Juan sees this message, things are going bad on their home planet. Juan was supposed to receive this message at the age of three, so his father uses dolls to explain that she Tone is ruled by a ruthless tyrant, and Juan is their only weapon against him. He asks his son to come to Chiton and save the planet when he grows enough. His mother finds a cloth with the letter S in Juan's ship. The superhero is not eager to fly to another galaxy, but his parents insist since it is his honor to fulfill his destiny. The woman makes a superhero costume from the found cloth, and Juan looks fantastic in it. They recall that the man from the rocket said that Juan should be able to fly. The three of them go to check this. However, Juan just awkwardly falls face down from a three-story building. Disheartened, he goes for a walk. Kids on bicycles start mocking him for his appearance. One child shows him the middle finger, and when Juan responds with a finger gesture, he discovers that it allows him to soar into the air. The frightened kids scatter, and Juan accidentally flies to another town at supersonic speed. He jumps across cities until he finally gets the hang of flying and returns home. His mother helps him fit the costume under regular clothes. His dad advises him on how to properly tear clothes in case of danger. At that moment, Luisa knocks on the door. She quickly approaches Juan and hugs him. Then she says that she knows everything that happened because Jaime told her. They go upstairs to talk about it. Luisa tries to justify Agatha's behavior in Juan's eyes and convince him to cooperate with her. Of course, this is not the real Luisa, just a cyborg clone controlled by Agatha. Juan wants to discuss the previous evening and the kiss, but Agatha has no idea what happened that night and what to say. Then, Jaime takes control of the cyborg and starts telling how disgusting Juan's kissing was and how he essentially betrayed his friend with such an act. Juan admits that it was indeed a nasty move on his part and that he is ready to give up Luisa for the sake of his only friend, whom he values the most. This touches Jaime to tears, while Agatha takes control back and beats Juan. Juan, like a true superhero, tries to tear his everyday clothes, but he's not very successful, so his mom and dad help him. A fight ensues between the cyborg and the Spanish superhero, and the mother joins the battle. But when Luisa is about to deal away with the superhero's mother, he knocks her head off with a single blow. Seeing what Agatha has done, Jaime realizes that he made a mistake dealing with her. He tries to backpedal, but Agatha reads his thoughts and learns that he plans to warn his friend that she is going to kidnap the real Luisa. Meanwhile, the parents tell Juan that the real Luisa is now in danger because of him. His mother makes him go to rescue the girl. Juan learns over the phone that she is walking near the arch and urgently flies to the scene. He tries to tell her everything about his superpowers and the true nature of Agatha Muller. Of course, she doesn't believe him and asks him to prove it by flying over the arch. But he is interrupted by local costumed characters, mistaking him for a competitor. They intend to beat him up for working without permission. At that moment, Luisa is kidnapped by Agatha his minions. The billionaire contacts Juan again with a special sound that only he can hear. She orders him to come to her tower if Juan wants to save Luisa. Writhing in pain made by the sound, Juan accidentally scatters all the costumed characters. Juan goes to Agatha's tower. On the upper floor, he finds Jaime and Luisa tied up. 
Luisa still doesn't believe he's a superhero, despite Jaime confirming Juan's words. Following Jaime's advice, Juan uses his super sight to prove his words to Luisa. He tells about the lingerie and the girl's tattoo in an intimate area, leaving no doubt about his abilities. At this moment, Agatha activates her special sound, causing him immense pain. Friends try to cheer up Juan, but motivational speeches don't work on him. Then, they accidentally discover that he gets truly motivated by insults, so they start mocking the superhero. Meanwhile, the tyrant from Chiton arrives to Earth. Agatha admits she's glad to see her father, but he disdainfully orders her to show him the superhero. Under the insults, Juan manages to gather strength and fly with his friends out of the tower. Agatha brings her father to an empty room. He starts reprimanding her, calling her a disgrace to the family. She tries to convince him that the entire planet is under her control thanks to her technologies used in every device. However, the man continues to humiliate her, comparing her unfavorably with more successful relatives. He confesses to feeling ashamed of her as his daughter. Agatha can't take it and disconnects his artificial respirator. Then she reads the dying father's thoughts, where he admits that after this act, he is proud of her. With relief, she throws her father out of the tower and takes his place. Juan brings his friends to his parents' house. He tries to burn his costume, but the fabric doesn't catch fire. The mustachioed confesses that after saving the train, his life went downhill. He wants to quit superheroing so that Agatha can't find him. However, at this moment, a spaceship descends from which Agatha emerges. Juan shouts at her again that he won't go to another galaxy. The villainess responds that she will burn this planet to the ground, presses a red button, and her egg-shaped chair transforms into a giant robot. Juan quickly retrieves the costume from the fire and wears it. His father tries to help, but Agatha sucks the man in with the giant vacuum built into the robot's arm. Kids appear, the ones who mocked Juan earlier, and start recording the battle on their phones. Agatha spins the superhero and throws him away. Juan lands in the middle of a live soccer match. He grabs the goal net and returns to the battlefield. He sees Agatha chasing his mother and wants to help, but being clumsy, accidentally throws the net onto his mother. The villainess sucks in the mother and starts trampling Juan. Jaime tries to distract her, for which Agatha sucks him in too. The villainess is ready to cut the superhero in half with a circular saw when Luisa arrives in a Spanish Cybertruck and starts humiliating Juan to give him strength. Sitting inside the robot, Jaime joins in the insult. Juan comes to his senses and tears off the robot's arm. Luisa drives the car behind the robot and yells for Juan to repeat the trick the teenagers did in the pizzeria. Juan freezes the visor with icy breath and pushes the robot back with his middle finger. The villainess falls into the pool, and everyone successfully gets out of the water. Juan and Luisa are ready to kiss again, but the mother interrupts them and asks about his home planet, as they are counting on their superhero. Juan claims that he already has a plan. The tyrant's ship returns to Chiton with a tied up Agatha on board. All the residents joyfully greet the hero, who turns out to be the costumed character we saw near the arch. The scientist's wife asks the imposter to kiss her, and he does so in a quite passionate way. Sometime later on Earth, Luisa wakes up to an alarm clock, and next to her is Juan, who is getting ready to patrol the city. He flies over the picturesque places of Spain with a proud expression, while in the background, we hear people's surveyed opinions about the superhero. The residents are worried about the appearance of the Spanish superhero, and most consider it a nuisance. The majority of those surveyed complain that he only brings trouble. Later, Juan dashes into the same pizzeria for lunch with Luisa. The girl expresses dissatisfaction that his job interferes with their relationship. When they finally come to a compromise, Juan asks for the check, but the waiter says it's already paid for by the man at the bar. The hooded stranger at the bar turns to them, calling Juan Super Lopez, implying that he knows who he really is. The bald man sucks the soother and disappears, showing that not only Juan has superpowers on this planet, 